From there, I'm going to move my x's to one side and my constants on the other. Uh, I'm going to get that 6 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2 on both sides, and x is equal to 3. But <clears throat> if you look, that doesn't... It doesn't stop there, because, yeah, we know that x is equal to 3, but it also wants to know what the length of segment LA is. Well, right now, the length of segment LA is being represented by 5x minus 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value of uh, x equals 3, I'm going to plug it in. So the length of segment LA is 5 times 3 minus 3. And so the length of segment LA is going to be 12. In this case, we're not given units, um, and so I want you to get in the habit of just writing the word units when you're not given any. So the value of x is 3. Variables do not have units. Um, and then the length of segment LA is 12 units long, whatever that may be. Um, over here on the left, <coughs> It says, for each part of item 5, make a sketch so that you can identify the parts of the segment. Please. The book says that it's a tip. Um, I'm saying it's a requirement. Just do it. It'll help you in the long run, I promise. Um, below that, it says, connect to AP. Um, it says, you will frequently be asked to find the lengths of horizontal, vertical, and diagonal segments in coordinate plane in AP calculus. So when you all get up to those... Um, more advanced, the higher level um, courses, you will be asked um, to do this exact thing. Um, so we're just trying to prepare you for that. It seems kind of basic now, um, but you'll get into some pretty crazy stuff when you get to calculus. It's awesome. Um, the next thing, on page 41, it uh, brings up a couple of new terms. It says, um, the midpoint of a segment is the point on the segment that divides it, referring to the original segment, into two congruent segments. So if I've got this bad boy here, segment RT, if I have the midpoint, I'm going to call it M as the midpoint, <clears throat> if I know that that is the midpoint, then that means it is dividing this whole thing, segment R, T, into two congruent um, parts. Notice how I added this notation in. These tick marks, these dashes, if you will, those are congruency marks. Um, it's a visual, visual representation uh, that, that denotes congruent segments. Uh, so if point M truly is the midpoint, then that means that segment RM is congruent to segment MT. Because when you're talking about congruence, that is same size, same shape. Um, so over here, um, in my notes, I want you to write congruent, same size, same shape. You use congruence when you're talking about the objects. Like I can say that one desk is congruent to another desk in my classroom. They have the same shape and same size. But when you start talking about measurements, like the heights and the widths and the volume and area and all that fun stuff, um, you, you don't say congruent. You don't say, oh, the, the height of that desk is congruent to the height of the other desk. Like, no one talks like that. Um, because congruence is reserved for um, same shape, same size. So when you do start talking about heights and widths and uh, lengths and areas and volumes, uh, you then have to change your <clears throat> um, terminology to um, equality, to equals. So that desk's height equals the other desk's height, or the area equals the other area, so on and so forth. So congruence is reserved for same size, same shape, and that's when you're talking about objects. Um, so I'll put a little star. This is when you're talking about the objects, like triangles and pentagons and segments and angles and so on and so forth. Um, this is talking about objects. Um, 
So it says, for example, if B is the midpoint of segment AC, so we were given this little diagram here, then you know that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. So if you know that those two segments have the same sh shape, same size, then you know that their measurements, notice how my notation changes, this reads segment AB, this reads the length of segment AB, and when you start talking about lengths, that's when you switch to equality. And you see that the length of segment AB is equal to the length of segment BC. <clears throat> um, number six just asks us to do a couple of examples. I've pre-drawn these segments because I'm going to use them. So if you want to pause your video and, and create those segments, that'd be a good idea. Uh, it tells us that point M is the midpoint of segment RS. So I know that this whole segment we're referring to is RS, and that M is the midpoint. So I'm going to put it right in the middle. Um, so it says if the length of segment RS is equal to 10, again, notice how I'm reading this. If the length of segment RS is equal to 10, so I'm going to go ahead and label that, then the length of segment SM or the length of segment uh, MS is equal to what? Well, if that whole thing is 10, divide that by 2, you're going to get 5 and 5. So the length of segment MS is equal to the length of segment MS, which is equal to 5 units. It doesn't give us a, a, a certain unit like inches, yards, or feet, um, so we're just going to write the words unit. On the next one, it says, we're still dealing with the same diagram that you have this segment RS um, and M is the midpoint, just we're going to be using different numbers. It says if RM is 12 units long, then what's MS? Well, if I know point M is the midpoint, then I know that the length of segment RM is equal to the length of segment MS, so therefore that must be 12 making the whole thing 24 units. So MS would be 12 units, and RS is equal to 24 units. Um, <clears throat> here we have some check your understanding, just gives us an opportunity to, to see if we actually know what we're talking about. It says points D and E are aligned with a ruler. So I've drawn this line um, with point D. It says point D is at the mark for four and a half centimeters. It says that if you know the distance between points D and E, wherever E is, if you know that distance is 3.4 centimeters, at which two marks on the ruler could point E be located? Um, well, you know that it could be this way, 3.4 centimeters, which would mean point E would be at 1.1, or it could go the other way. Maybe E is on the right-hand side of it. So maybe E is over here, um, where you add 3.4, making that 7.9 centimeters. So that would be your two locations of point E. It just depends on the scenario, whether it's to whether point E is on the left hand side or on the right hand side. Number eight says point N is the midpoint of segment FG. So again, if you need to pause and create this diagram, that's cool. But if I know that point G is the midpoint, then I know that segment FN, so segment FN is congruent to segment NG which that implies that their lengths are equal. Please notice the notation change. This is segments, talking about objects and congruence. This is length and equality. If Fn is equal to 2x, so I'm going to say that Fn here is 2x, well then what is an expression that represents Fg, the whole thing? Well since Fn is equal to Ng, this could also be represented as 2x, so therefore the whole thing is 4x. Um, number 9 says reason abstractly. Um, does a ray have a midpoint? Explain. If I have a ray, we know that the definition of a ray is that 
there is one endpoint and then it extends infinitely in one direction. Um, so the fact that this goes on forever and ever 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 never stops, then your answer is no. There's no way that that can have a midpoint um, because you can't have half of something that never ends. Um, that's why you don't have a midpoint of a line. A line goes in both directions forever. Um, so there is no beginning, there is no end. Um, so you can't have halfway of that. Moving on, it says you can also use number line to find the distance between two points. So if we have this number line, point L is at negative 3, point M is at positive 4, this question asks, what is the length of segment LM? Well, if we refer back to <clears throat> the previous pages, the second part of the ruler postulate is that the points on a line can be matched with the real numbers. So meaning the points like L and M can be matched up with real numbers like negative 3 and 4. They can be matched up. Um, so that the distance between any two points is the absolute value of the difference of the associated numbers. Circle, highlight that. That's extremely important. It is the absolute value of the difference. Difference means subtraction. So if I want to find the distance of this segment or, or find the distance between these two points, I'm going to take the absolute value of their difference. So I'm going to have the absolute value of negative 3 minus 4 that is the absolute value of negative 7, which equals 7. Or, I could, do, could have done it the other way. 4 minus a negative 3 is equal to, well, whenever you subtract a negative, it's like adding that value. So 4 minus a negative 3, or 4 plus 3, is 7. So the absolute value of positive 7 is, again, 7. Distance is always positive. Distance is always posi Oop, positive. <laughs> I forgot how to spell it for a second. Positive. Moving on. <clears throat> it says the midpoint of a segment is halfway between its endpoints. That makes sense. The midpoint's right in the middle, so it's halfway in between. So if you know the coordinates of the endpoints, you can just simply average them, average the two coordinates to find the coordinate of the midpoint. Um, whenever you take the average of values, you um, sum them all up, and then you divide by however many there were. So if you have 10 numbers, you add the 10 numbers up and divide by 2. Well, if we need to find the average of these two endpoints, there's two of them, so you're going to add them up and divide by 2. So M, the midpoint, is equal to 8 plus 40, because those are my two coordinates of my endpoints, divided by 2. Divided by 2 because we're adding two things together. This is 48 divided by 2, or 24. So we know that the midpoint is right there. I know some of you are thinking, well, Mr. Niven, why don't, why don't I just count? <laughs> like, why don't I just say um, I'm going to jump one... Uh, tick mark in both directions towards the middle and do it again and do it again and then get to M. Um, in, in theory that works um, but when you have um, a segment that's on your X and Y coordinate that has a slope other than zero or undefined so it's like a diagonal um, you, you're not going to be able just to, to count um, you're going to have to use this, um, this fact that um, the midpoint is the average. Um, that's going to come into play when we get to uh, our next activity. Um, down here, a uh, math tip, it says a number line represents one, dimension, one dimensional coordinate system. You will explore the concepts of distance and midpoint um, using a two-dimensional coordinate system when you work with the coordinate plane in the next activity. So it's just saying, hey, yeah, this is dumb and easy, but appreciate it and understand that you're taking the, the average of your x values because later on it's going to get a little bit more 
intense, a little bit more complicated. Um, on your own, I challenge you to do item 13, check here in a standing.